Hi everyone, Gerdy Verwoerd here, their greatly coach and guide. Day four of the um, series about how to safely hike mountains and uh, whether you're doing it solo or you're going for the first time or both or you uh, have hiked before, uh, these tips are always good to have in mind when you are going on a mountain hike. This one is um, I think really important and that oh, that is make sure you have a backup. I don't mean a backup plan though that is good as well but I mean somebody back home or at the hotel where you're staying that knows where you'll be going and um, that knows when to expect you back. So you may think that nothing's going to happen to you because you've um, picked a popular trail, you've researched your trail, you know how to read a map but that's not true. I just, literally, I just ran into somebody from Search and Rescue around here who told me that they had um, to go out yesterday to pick somebody up in the mountains behind me here because um, even though there was an experienced hiker, he twisted his knee and he couldn't go on anymore. He had to be airlifted out. So, um, and that wouldn't have been possible if he didn't know how to use the map, didn't know where he was so he could tell people where to look for him and maybe not even have a backup. But the point is that I'm trying to make, even when you're an experienced hiker, something can happen that um, will make it really, will make you really happy that you have told somebody where you will be today when you're hiking. So um, what do you tell these people? How? What information do they need to have when uh, you go off into the mountains by yourself or with a small group with your family, for example, or even with a big group? First, tell them, leave them um, information about when you're going out, what trail you're going to hike and when you expect to be back. Preferably, I like to do that by sending or giving them a map of the trail that I'm going to hike. Also, um, sometimes it can be really useful to give them a description of your car and the number of the license plate. So um, when uh, the uh, police or search and rescue or whoever is going to look for you, um, find your car in the, design in the area that you said you were going to park in, they know at least that you, t uh, that you um, actually were there earlier in the morning or in the day. Then um, what else? phone numbers for search and rescue for the police, um, which numbers to call in the area that you will be hiking in, um, so that when you don't come back or contact your backup at the time that you said you would, and the time has come for them to raise the alarm, they know who to call. And they also have the information that, um, you, uh, that they need to have to be able to tell them where you are. And a very important, I mentioned this already, what time do you expect to be back? Um, and finally, um, what is really important is um, to agree with this person that is going to serve as your backup when they are um, going to call for search and rescue, when they are going to raise the alarm and what they need to do when they raise the alarm. So be quite specific or uh, you know, talk this through with the person that is your backup and be quite specific on what it is that they need to be doing when you don't call in. For example, I was backup for uh, some people I know that were hiking in Italy or uh, in Austria uh, a couple of weeks ago. And um, we agreed that they would send me text messages and letting me know they were safe and they would do that around no later than 8 p.m. But knowing they were in the mountains and sometimes wouldn't have connection, we also agreed that I would wait until uh, something like 10 p.m. before I would raise the alarm. And at some point we even agree agreed to uh, that I would wait until the next day because they were hiking in an area that was more populated. So agree be very specific, talk it through with the person that is your backup, um, when they are going to raise the alarm and what they are going to do when they do that. 
Now, who is this backup going to be? Well, first of all, it needs to be a person that doesn't panic very easily because sometimes, you know, sometimes it just takes a little bit longer for you to check in. Then, um, and that can be a family member, it can be a good friend, it can be somebody at the hotel reception, uh, it can be the, um, the, the people that, um, that man the, the mountain hut that you are staying in. You know, but sensible people and preferably people that know the area a little bit. So when I go hiking, for example, I have two friends in the area here. Either one, either one of those I will let know where I'm going to be hiking by myself, what trail it is that I'm going to take and when I expect to be back. Now, there's a very important thing you have to do when you get back out of the mountains. And that is check in with your backup. You wouldn't be the first person that had made all these arrangements with a backup, then came out of the mountain safely and forgot to inform the backup that they were back. And the alarm was raised. And since, uh, and maybe you've turned off your phone or you don't hear it, so people start calling you, you don't respond. And this whole search and rescue operation is then mounted and people go into the mountains looking for you. And a lot of costs are made uh, Volunteers usually with search and rescue may even try uh, or risk their lives trying to find you and you are sitting with your feet in um, Or maybe with your entire body in a bathtub uh, enjoying um, a nice hot bath Relaxing and uh, maybe even have a beer at your ha at your at your side uh, blissfully unaware of all the um, turmoil you're causing in uh, because you haven't checked in so always let people know, let your backup know that you came back safely and that they can stop worrying about you. All right, so that is tip four. Always let somebody know that uh, where you will be going, you know, organize, be sure to have a backup. That's it for today. As always, go there greatly. Bye bye.